speaker series, Resilience and Reconstruction, Exploring the Impact of COVID-19 on the Common Good. Thank good morning, you. good afternoon, and good evening. I am Dr. Jacqueline LeBlanc, Vice President and Provost for GCNYC, and I am thrilled to be leading a discussion today with Grameen Caledonian College of Nursing. Good morning and good evening to us. A partnership between GCU and Grameen Healthcare Trust, the Grameen Caledonian College of Nursing was established in 2010 in Dhaka, Bangladesh. The visionary college offers international standard nursing education and clinical practice to its students, as well as raising the status of the profession in Bangladesh and providing opportunities, education and training to women from impoverished backgrounds across the country. In 2013, the college celebrated its inaugural graduation when 38 graduates were awarded a Bangladesh Nursing Council approved diploma in nursing and midwifery. Professor Muhammad Yunus, Chancellor Emeritus of Glasgow Caledonian University said, GCCN gives young women opportunities and prepares them to be leaders and change agents in healthcare for the future. We have with us today, the principal of Grameen Caledonian College of Nursing, Niru Shamsun Nahar, as well as assistant professor, Prasanto Kumar Datta, and lecturer, Nahida Akter. As I lead the conversation with our guests, I encourage you to post your own questions using the Q&A feature. Okay, so let's start with you please telling us about the history and the mission of Grameen Caledonian College of Nursing. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, our history actually, the college is established in 2010 with 40 students and diploma in nursing and midwifery course. This is a partnership between GCU and GCCN. And we are affiliated with the Bangladesh Nursing and Midwifery Council at that time and Ministry of Health and Family Planning. So with 40 students, we started our journey and the students came from the Ramin Borwar's family and their children. And they are from the in improvised area in Bangladesh and very poor family. So Professor Yunus uh, uh, decided, okay, the Gravin Borrower children, uh, they will study only this college and they will get the loan from the Gramin Bank. And with this loan, they will study in this college and when they will qualify, they will work in the uh, Bangladesh in different area. And when they will qualify after one year, because one year they will get the chance to establish them. And after one year, they will start to look back slowly, but very few amount, how long they will take doesn't matter. So this way we established this college, only 40 students and um, the leader was the Barbara Parfit from the GCU. And this time I joined as a vice principal in this college and I worked with Barbara Parfit to establish this college. And in 2015, we started another two new courses. That is one is BSc in nursing. And BSc in uh, nursing, we call the post basic. This is who qualified the diploma in nursing. After that, they will study again two years under the public university and they will get the BSc in nursing certificate. So these two course, Says we started now. We have the three courses, and we have uh, nearly 500 students at the moment in that college. And now, 2018, we already did some break-even point. So now our college is sustainable position. Excellent! And Congratulations. Go ahead. And uh, Barbara left 2013. And then Professor Frank Cousin came from the GCU as a principal. 
in this college. And 2015, I became principal in this college and uh, Frank Rosen became advisor in this college. And I think 2015, 16, 17, Francis Rosen left this Bangladesh and he was an advisor and he stayed in the class uh, GCU and he advised us and two, three times he came to Bangladesh and um, I went to GCU several times. And after that, Francine person left the job in GCU. Then Gordon took the handover from the rank. This way our college is running, still GCU is supported us and this is giving the scholarship for our students, our four, four students from the first cohort of students got the scholarship from the GCU and they studied their BSc degree in, from the GCU. And after that, another two students went to the GCU and then they got the BSc degree. When we started our BSc degree, then we started to send our students for the masters. Now four, uh, four students went to GCU and they qualified master degree and they came back and they become our faculty members. So this way we are developing our students, also developing our faculty members also. Wow. So this is our history. Yeah, amazing. Establishing this college. And now I am uh, preparing to uh, open another courses, that is the Diploma in Midwifery course, three years. And also we are still the temporary campus. Uh, there was a date to shift our uh, permanent campus because permanent campus almost ready for us. So this year we should um, shift it, but unfortunately there is pandemic situation, so we didn't go there. Now, again, I got the time. This is the 1st of April, 2021. We can shift to the new campus. And this is a very big campus, huge campus. And 900 students I can provide at a time in my academic building. And 700 female students can stay in the hostel. So this time, I think I will um, apply for the master's course there. Yes. So this oh. is our plan. Oh, excellent. Excellent. So uh, tell us about the student body. Are they all women? Um, actually, in Bangladesh, there is a rule from the government. Uh, this is 10% um, male student and 90% female. So most of the female. So we can recruit 90% uh, female student and 10% male student. So before when, when the new college until 2014, mm -hmm. we recruited 100% female students. So from 2015, when we got the BSc course, that time the government gave us the rule, no, we have to recruit 10% male, male students. So now we are recruiting 10% male students and 90% female, so most of the students are female. Right. All right, so tell us a little bit about nursing in Bangladesh. Is it a female dominated profession as it is, as I know it to be certainly in the United States or you know, are men nurses as well? Can you, can you speak a little bit about that? Um, <laughs> actually, because in this country, there is the most of the female nurses and uh, uh, so most of, actually this is female dominated, I will say, uh, because everywhere the post is uh, booked by the female nurses, so like nursing superintendent, nursing principal, most of the female nurses. And you know, in Bangladesh, there is the, um, there is the religiously, some they are conservative. So some, some area, male nurses cannot go there like the labor ward, labor patient. So male nurses cannot work there. So that's why the female nurses are working here. Yes, yes. Okay. 
And tell us where the graduates from your program typically work. Like, do they go back to their, their homes and where they grew up initially and go back and work there? Or are they working more in the city? Um, actually, when they are qualified from our college, so before they qualified, every year we organize the job fair because we don't have our own hospital. It is already constructed. A 500 bed hospital, but our students before the graduate November actually November we organized the job fair and um, very a very very good hospital and we call them like 20 25 hospital we invited them to our college and that time actually our students interviewed by the recruiter and they get the job and when they just finish their exam even not the registration get the hospital recruited them as a um, provisionary nurse so they worked that hospital as a provisionary and when they get the registration they become registered nurse there so this way most of the our students get job immediately when they finish their exam. So even though one day they are not sitting in the home. So first of all, actually they join in the private hospital. There is very, very famous uh, five, six hospital and they are interested to recruit our students, Sudan students. And one hospital at a time, they took our all the students there so wow. this way they are getting the job and after that when the government uh, published their recruitment that time our students applied there and they are interviewed by the government sector and now uh, already 582 students qualified for my college i am telling you that data 426 students qualified as a diploma in nursing science and midwifery because it started fast and then 82 students they qualified bsc nursing and also post basic 74 students qualified now total 400 uh, 582 students so among them more than 300 students already they got the government job in the government sector wow wow wonderful Wonderful. Can I, can I add something? Yes. Yes, I think you, you asked a very good question because uh, 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 it's important to mention here that 100% uh, our graduates are employed right after the graduation. It's, it's in it because, uh, you know, uh, where according to studies, recent studies by Bangladesh Institute of Development Studies, uh, it says 39%. 38.6 uh, to be exact are university graduates unemployed in Bangladesh, 39%. Whereas in our, our college, all graduates are 100% uh, uh, employed. So it's a remarkable uh, achievement, I should say. Really and uh, this is happening because uh, Grameen Kelly Junior College of Nursing has uh, uh, you know, uh, developed the reputation and the skill and you know expertise that nurses require. So uh, especially the private uh, uh, hospitals, top hospitals in the country are waiting to pick our nurses. They are contacting us through various channels. Mm -hmm. So uh, we don't actually uh, ask students to join any particular hospitals, but because it's totally students' choice to choose from, and they have to choose from like uh, you know, wide areas, you know, plethora of, of possibilities, yes. like government hospitals, private hospitals and clinics. And there are a number of NGOs as well, international NGOs. Uh, those are working on healthcare uh, on, and sanitation. So our nurses are also working in, in that particular area. So yeah. it's a huge opportunities for the nurses. Yes, yes. So tell me about, or tell us about the curriculum. You know, because we read on the website 
that uh, you're, you're training local nurses according to standards common in the global north, it says. So is there something special about your curriculum that has helped your reputation and therefore it helped to get wonderful jobs and to be in such high demand? About the, the courses that you teach, is there something uh, unique about, about that? Yeah, that is a very good question. Actually, in Bangladesh, we cannot use the different curriculum or our own curriculum because we have to use the government curriculum and one curriculum that is by the University of Dhaka, the public university, and we are affiliated by public university. But our college, we are using that curriculum that is very standard curriculum and it is um, recognized by WHO and other, but our teaching methodology is different than the other because uh, we use the teaching methodology with students oriented and teacher as a guider. And also we teach our students in a positive manner. So when they will go to the hospital, they always be positive with the patient, with the team. So this way uh, we teach them and this is the actually the learning their learn her students guider and we have the teacher they only guide the students this is the uh, totally students oriented learning so that's why they are different than the other students in other colleagues yes yes i think nahida want to say something <laughs> Thank you so much. So I want to add something, you know, with uh, Professor Neeru Samson Nahar. So she has already told that our students are quite different from other discipline in Bangladesh, actually, because we are teaching our students in a different manner, though the curriculum is completely set by our government and approved by other organization, for example, WSO. But the thing is, when they have completed their course, they definitely, you know, they just go for other social work and they are engaged with other community service. So we guess it's very different and it's a really novel job other than other professions. So we can say this is for common good and, you know, and community are getting benefits from them. And um, they have already engaged with other NGO works as Prashanto sir, you know, told you quite a minute before. So they're serving the people and uh, people are really, really getting benefit from our students. So as this manner, we can say that nursing curriculum is completely for common goods and people are getting benefit from our students. Thank you. And in addition to, I would like to say, because our students when go to the clinical practice, uh, our teacher always go with the students and they stayed with the students eight hours in the hospital and they teach the students in the bedside teaching and also they guided the students in the clinical area, they mentored, they supervised. So this way our students learned quite different than the other students, other college. So in comparison of the other college, that's why when the recruitment came, so the um, uh, hospital, they like the, uh, our students because they are very quite good than the other students. And besides and that- As well as their is English is very good. They uh, learn the computer in the campus. So they are very good in the computer. Yes, so I was going to add like that uh, point because uh, most other colleges, uh, nursing colleges, use uh, Bengali uh, as a you know a main medium of teaching. But in our college, we use English uh, for communication. And you know the in nursing education, all books and higher education books and exams all are in English. So students who are advanced in English are necessarily do well in their job. So that is why uh, we also have the scholarships uh, opportunities for those who are deserving. Yes. Wow, that's a that's a great point. Thank you. We have a question actually that has been posted from Karen Thompson, Associate Dean, International School of Health and Life Sciences in Glasgow. 
And she says, uh -huh. hi, Nero, lovely to see you. Hi, <laughs> hi, Karen, how are you? She has written, Queen, yeah. Yeah. She has written COVID, okay. con COVID continues yeah. to have a devastating impact globally. And I have no doubt Bangladesh is suffering terribly. Yeah. I would like to hear a little more about how you and your team are coping. What strategies have you put in place for your students, particularly in relation to clinical learning? Yeah, this is a very big problem because COVID came suddenly. We had exam that time. Uh, so suddenly after the exam from 17th of the March, we have to close our college according to the government order. And not only our college, every school and college in Bangladesh that is closed and our students went home. So um, after that, from the April, we started the e-learning portal and through the e-learning portal, we delivered uh, the students to the lecture online. And also Zoom, we use the Zoom and our teachers delivered the lecture from the home. But they are not the like the other students. They are practical based, so they cannot go the practical, and we miss the practical things. So still, we cannot open the college. So in this way, our students are suffering more and more in the practical based. And I am worried about these practical things. Yeah. And also the problem arises because college was closed totally four months. And then we open close part, uh, open the college partially and with routine, we come to the college because there is administrative job. I have to come to finish the administrative job. And, um, but the, some students, they are studying their own, uh, own uh, expense, but we are not getting the money from them. So this way we are suffering actually this COVID. Yes, things. yes. In the United States as well. Yeah. How about, how about your college is still closed? Yes, yes. Uh, but but we are, we're operating remotely just like this on Zoom. And of course we, Zoom, te yeah. we teach business so we don't have to worry about the clinical. Yeah, the other things you can, but the nursing totally practical based the lab, the practical, clinical practice, so we can't do anything in this yeah. way. Uh, how about the hospitals? Are you, do you have any, uh, anything that you can share about hospitals and, and how those are coping during COVID? Yeah, in hospital in Bangladesh, there is a two, two kinds of hospital, one is public and one is private. So public hospital, there is the, some hospital, they uh, just uh, make it totally COVID hospital and the patient admitted there. And immediately the um, uh, government recruited more 5,000 nurses in the, you know, in Bangladesh, there is a um, shortage of nurses and doctor is more than the nurses. So that's why the government is trying to the, there is more uh, nursing college is established for the private and public to increase the nurses in Bangladesh. So the immediate recruited 5,000 nurses in government sector, also the higher education, some nurses were the higher education with the second date. So they cancel the second date and they join in the hospital, this way they manage the hospital. And private hospital also, there is huge shortage of nurses, but they are managing the COVID patient as well as other patients, so this is a difficult situation in Bangladesh, but they are managing. Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, another question has been posted from Adrian Studer, who is a, a professor at GCNYC. He's, he wrote, you mentioned the high success rate of finding jobs at hospitals, clinics, yeah. et cetera, for graduates. Since most nursing type jobs require physical presence, you have a concern about a backup for students to find jobs as long as the pandemic is at its peak. Are there new ways to apply the skills remotely, online, 
at the students' new workplaces. So uh, to, what, to what extent is, is COVID affecting uh, the, the getting the jobs for students? Or I wonder if it might, uh, that they might be in higher demand. Well, neither you want to answer, but I can yeah, answer. No problem. <laughs> yeah, we both can answer. So yeah. first of all, you know, though nursing is really demanding profession in Bangladesh, I believe in everywhere in the world. So Bangladesh is not exception. Still, we have crisis. You know, we have we are managing to manage our healthcare profession, healthcare sector by a few number of nurses. So the you know demand is at peak. So the thing is, due to COVID nineteen, is still you know, people are suffering and government is trying to manage by the shortest number of nurses. But our students in the meantime, they are getting more opportunities to work in different, different NGOs to manage this situation. And, you know, government already recruited 5,000 more nurses just a couple of months back. So many, like, you know, many positions and posts are empty in private sector. So in that sectors, our students are working. So in other means, uh, like COVID-19 is a kind of blessing for some of unemployed nurses in Bangladesh. So mm -hmm. this is how they are getting opportunity in this during this pandemic. So I guess it's not bad because they're working and they are just, you know, uh, achieving something and gaining some experience from their real life experience which they will use maybe after a couple of months or when we will overcome this pandemic situation. So that's how they are getting benefit. Yes. Yeah, yes. to add to Nahida's point, I must say that, uh, you know, that there are, uh, you know, the number of emergency hospitals are set up uh, due to, because of COVID situation. COVID. Mm -hmm. And these hospitals and, you know, our health facilities require uh, trained professionals. And, this create a lot of vacancy for trained uh, nurses and, and they're also in good benefits uh, as well. So I think many of our nurses are now working, helping people to recover from um, the COVID-19 uh, uh, situation. Yes. And yes. in plot to that, another thing that not only COVID, there is, you know, in our country, there is a Rohingya problem. So Rohingya came from the Myanmar and uh, one part of the Bangladesh, there is the south part in Cox's Bazaar, there is Rohingya and uh, many nurses are working and NGO are working for the Rohingya Refugee. problem. Refugee. Refugee. Yeah, right. And uh, this is also another situation. Our nurses are getting the job in the NGO and they are working in the refugee camps and they are getting the higher salary there. So nurses are interested to go there because this is a different kind of job because NGO job. So this way our nurses, I think, and also still huge shortage of nurses in Bangladesh. And also that recently I got offer from the Japan because Japan, they said 10 million nurses are shortage. So they are very interested to recruit the nurses from our country, especially they choose my colleges, but there is the one problem. You have to learn the Japanese language to go to there. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, but they are interested to recruit our nurses. And also I got the offer from the UK because there is the shortage of nurses. So I, I think our nurses will go anywhere. So there is the no job problem for them. Absolutely. Wow, Japan, yes. I, and uh, with time, you will probably add the United States to that list. There's yes, hopefully. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay, I wonder if you can tell us about the research program at GCCN. I read about this on the website. And uh, the research program says it is to study the impact of education on women's empowerment, poverty, yeah. and health. Have you worked with GCU on this research? Can you tell us a little bit about it? All right, thank you very much, actually. 
So I would like to share something with you. Uh, the thing is, you know, our faculty member, we are trying to do many researches on different, different issues, you know, different, different contemporary issues. So among them, this one is very important, like, you know, to see the impact of education, especially to empower the women in Bangladesh. So um, it's, this topic is very contemporary, but not new to us. Because previously, our professor Niru Shamsun Nahar, you know, our principal with uh, another ex-principal from Glasgow, uh, you know his name probably, the professor Frank Prosan. So with his collaboration, they did a nice research. So their research topic was the impact of individual development and organizational support on Bangladeshi nurses. So that was completely focused on our glass, you know, uh, Grameen Caledonian College of Nursing. Yeah. So um, it was kind of that research, but still we're trying to do something more. So if we get this kind of support from, you know, uh, ZCNYC and your master's students or other faculty, so we would be very happy to do this type of research and work on it and to explore more fast areas. Yes, wonderful, uh, wonderful. We, of course, we do not have a nursing program, but still I think that our master's students would be very, very interested in the women's empowerment angle. And so I, I would love, I would love that to happen. And we are going to speak more. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. So speaking of, speaking of women's empowerment, uh, so I also see from your website that many of the faculty at GCCN are women and the, the principal, you know, is a woman. Is it, <laughs> now, it, this could be because it, it's a, a nursing focused Women's college, right. but yeah. to, to what extent are you maybe also offering opportunities for, you know, professors and for teaching for women? Do you think that that's also True, and how, how unique is it that you have uh, many, I don't know, many, many women on the faculty? Actually, we don't want to gender bias, but when I give the circular, I never mention female or male. So the when application comes, most of the female, and uh, we take the interview three way, like written test, then oral test, and demonstration. So that time who qualified, I don't see he or she who is qualified. I recruit them, but at the last of the day, I see most of the women. So <laughs> this is not my fault. <laughs> right, right, so right, right. because the most of the nurses are women and my faculty, most of the nurses, I have two uh, non-nurses. There are four teachers who is English teacher, one is IT teacher, and one is doctor. So the English teacher is male, and IT teacher male, and doctor male. And nurses teacher also, I have two teachers are male teachers. So, and another thing I think, the students, most of the are female. I think they feel comfort with their female teachers, faculty members. Sure, sure. Do you think that you will, um, or maybe you already have, I don't know, actually have someone who has graduated from the program and perhaps has, has gone on and, and indeed the master's program, that type of thing, to ever come back and teach? Yes, yes because the, see, my 40 students already, they qualified from the GCCN and they did the masters and they came back and they become my faculty members. So I think in future, uh, what we decided, um, who got the uh, excellent results, we'll recruit them as a faculty members and we will develop them further. Higher education, all right. Yeah. We have, I, I have a question, I believe from somebody in uh, Bangladesh from your community asking about nursing in the United States. And I'm not very equipped <laughs> to answer that, but, but um, one, one of the questions I suppose I, I could answer somewhat is what is the ratio of male nurses to female nurses in the United States? I don't know the exact 
uh, figure, but it, it continues to be a very female dominated uh, profession. Although there are, there are male nurses in the United States, it is very much you know, a, a female dominated profession, which comes of course from you know, historically doctors were men, that has changed very much in the United States. I, I believe that about half of doctors are women now, but uh, nursing, we, we are still working to attract men to nursing, which we would certainly like, like to do. Right. Yeah, some, some area, uh, we need the male nurse like orthopedic area and some area we need the male nurse. Yes. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, somebody had submitted this question when we were working on yeah. the list of questions. And this is regarding um, the environment and uh, sustainable practices in the nursing field itself, whether or not this is something that you are thinking about, if you will, meaning waste, and how much is discarded in the medical profession. I would imagine that the medical profession is uh, very high in terms of the waste products uh, that it produces. And I would imagine that would be a very uh, big challenge. I'm not sure if you have, if this is something that you have thought about, but any thoughts on that? No, I yeah, don't think so. I don't. Neither? Yeah, uh, actually, you know, we have still many challenges in Bangladesh, especially in nursing industry when it comes to sustainability and waste management, because, you know, as you told that we are every day using many products in nursing service in healthcare profession. So um, all of these products are not biodegradable. So still in Bangladesh, we have some lackings in recycling process. So we just, you know, we honestly speaking, we really don't have that much waste management system and still we are struggling with. So some of the products just throw and, you know, they are just kind of floating in the water system drain. So this is how it has a huge impact on our environment. And the other system is, Though our in our private hospitals, they are trying to manage everything and they are trying to dispose all waste materials, but in public hospitals, still we are struggling with. So this is the one major problem in our country. And um, I guess, you know, we have some lackings yeah. in our academic side and in our uh, kind of choosing uh, this kind of waste management in our nursing curriculum because still we have central association and we have many other you know arising association in Bangladesh but we really literally little more focused on waste management or our recycling process so I believe if we can include this in our curriculum or in our central association and we can make awareness, you know, public awareness. So that could be a great help to manage our waste. And we can arrange different type of, you know, training program for hospital staff, especially for nurses. Those are actively engaged with, you know, waste management. So um, I believe, you know, within very short time, we will definitely overcome this challenge. But still, we have this problem in Bangladesh. I think, uh, uh, to uh, Jacqueline, uh, I think uh, uh, in this area, we have a lot to learn from the United States because I think they have a um, much more advanced waste management system in place. So we have so much to learn from the US so that we can uh, replicate some of the systems that work in, in, in our areas, in our um, environment, and we can apply uh, those things. Maybe, maybe there's a poten potential there for a project with GCNYC. Even though we don't have nursing, we could <laughs> waste management in the medical profession. <laughs> that could absolutely work. And um, so, so we also have uh, some, some people have posted uh, some information and some questions about the men versus women in nursing. So Karen shared that in fact, GCU is running a project to encourage men into nursing, wonderful. 
So that's something that, that we can check out on, on the GCU website. That's fabulous. And uh, some friends have, of course, uh, Googled uh, the percentage of male nurses in the US and it's 10%. So that's- oh, like us. Yes, yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> a student uh, at GCNYC asked whether there is a pay gap between men and women nurses. You're saying that generally, but are you aware of this in Bangladesh, a pay gap? No, I, I don't think there is a, a role like us. You have to recruit only 10% male. No? So probably not. No. no. But Good. Bangladesh, uh -huh. uh, nowadays I saw because when the recruitment time use male male applied to yeah. come the nursing, but unfortunately we cannot recruit because of the rule regulation. Yes, yes, <laughs> wonderful. Okay, speaking speaking of wages, I've got I've got another another question from a student at GCNYC, and this this student comes from the fashion industry. So many of our students do, do come from the fashion industry and she is very aware that the fashion industry employs a large percentage of Bangladeshis, right? Um, and yeah. so, yeah. Uh, and, but um, often for below living a living wage, right? And she says, it seems like nursing is a wonderful alternate route for workers to take. And I assume earning living wages as you were just saying, right? Uh, with fashion production being cut by COVID and the climate crisis demands that production levels decrease, which could hurt Bangladeshi workers. So what I'm wondering, she says, is what might be alternate routes for sustainable development that is not as exploitative as the fashion industry? And what is, you know, what is uh, driving Bangladeshis to leave their villages uh, to earn exploitative poverty wages? And um, so what, what she's saying is that, is there an opportunity right now to shift, okay, some of those workers who were being employed at low wages in the fashion industry to perhaps to get them into the nursing industry and perhaps other types of hospital jobs? Yeah, yeah Jacqueline, it's a, it's a brilliant question. Let me, uh, 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 you know, uh, answer the question first because, uh, the fashion industry has been a forefront of our economy, you know, the main chunk of our export uh, comes from fashion industry and majority of uh, garment uh, workers are female. Uh, the same uh, trend goes to uh, nurses, majority are female, but uh, because of COVID situation, uh, it's badly hit, you know, the fashion industry's orders uh, are cancelled uh, and uh, workers get, uh, getting laid off. So uh, it's, it's a very uh, difficult situation for the fashion industries. So that is why the government is diversifying the economy uh, so that uh, there are other areas of possibilities. For example, uh, as you say, the nursing is one of the thriving areas uh, because uh, government has been very much keen on developing this sector. That is why last, over the last two years, around 16,000 thousand skilled nurses employed, which is record in, in, in uh, so far last, uh, in my uh, uh, knowledge. So, uh, uh, and also government is co uh, collaborating with international uh, players uh, uh, to help us, our nurses, so that uh, we can get trained nurses and one day our nurses will go overseas and send remittance because one of the biggest uh, source of our income is remittance, you know. A lot of people send money who are, you know, working abroad. You know, the immigrants are sending money and that is uh, helping our economy. So that is why how we are uh, trying to develop. And at the same time, you know, uh, the COVID situation is, uh, uh, you know, peopling the economy as a whole. It's not just in Bangladesh, also other parts of the uh, world, but in Bangladesh, You'd be happy to know probably uh, with the IMF projection is uh, expected to grow 3.8 percent. Well, most of the countries in the world are uh, you know going down. Uh, even in the United States, it's negative growth. 
So um, even in India, our neighboring countries, uh, the economy is contracting minus 10%, which is the biggest number uh, in, in, in recent history. So our economy has a lot of potentials, you know, and nursing is one of them. That is why uh, a lot of private industries and government uh, uh, is trying to develop, uh, you know, nursing college. It's our college to be one of them because uh, Professor Yunus, vision is to set up a nursing college, which is international standard, the same kind of qualified nurse that you produce in the US. We are going to produce uh, you know, similar trained nurses. So that is the vision of Professor Muhammad Yunus, our principal ma'am also following uh, his vision. And, and I hope that uh, she might, uh, might add something to this point, this one. I think the uh, one, or the fashion industry when are going to close up. So can can we bring them to the nursing sector? Is what? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I, I will tell about these uh, things because in Bangladesh, there is uh, from the Bangladesh Nursing and Midwifery Council, they set the rule for the recruitment. So there is uh, the age between 18 to 22 years old girl can come on with the nursing. And also they qualify uh, only two years before, like no break of study. And uh, there is GPA should be like six. So there is a lot of rules they said. So with, without this rule, we cannot recruit any nursing students. So if the fashion industries work hard, they are come with this rule regulation, they can come to the nursing. If not, we can recruit them. Because within this set of rule, have to they come. All right. Like I, I saw in the United Kingdom, like um, 50 years old also, they can come as a nursing student. But in our country, only 18 to 22 years old. Wow. Uh, yeah, so, and I would like to, you know, add something with Professor Niyu Shamshun Nahar. And uh, she told, as she told that we have age limitation for entry level in nursing during our admission process. So that's very true. And uh, we really don't have any scope to leave our major subject, you know, fashion industry, they are doing something, you know, study on their fashion subject or something. So we really can't change our major subject, but they have some scope, scope to work in different hospital if they have short courses or different different training, but as a registered nurse, they really can't do any work, I guess. So, so, okay. So, and this, this is uh, Golam Kimbria, if I am saying that right. So, Okay, this person posted, why will males be encouraged for nursing? So sorry to, to go back to, you know, what uh, Karen had posted that GCU is, has a, has a program to encourage males to become, why, you know, and, and why, would, uh, why would we want to do that? And I, I will just say something from the uh, American perspective, but then I'm very curious for what you would say uh, about that from the Bangladeshi perspective. But uh, just from one from a practical perspective, if there is a shortage then uh, of nurses, even in the United States, then if, if more men can, can go into yeah. uh, that profession, then it's just good overall, right? For hospitals and for healthcare. And also it's, it's really about um, the, the, the balance of, of opportunities for genders and making yeah. just very open, you know, um, in in the interest of, of having that that freedom for men or women to be able to choose any kind of any kind of profession. But what yeah. do you think about that in 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 Bangladesh and that type of question and the idea of encouraging males in in Bangladesh also because because the government rule only one profession this is only for female i think the nursing and all profession men can go there is no percentage that's why i think the government think only one profession and 
I I would like to say because the nursing profession needs the patience. So I think women have more patience than the men. So that's why the more women come to the nursing. And but we need the male. Uh, if I have opportunity like that, if there is no rule regulation, I can recruit the male because the physical strength may be more than the women. So some area need the male, but I think it is a profession female they need because the here female is the better than the male. That okay, is my definition. Let me, let me add being a male because you know I would probably give you a, a little different perspective uh, from uh, a different angle. Uh, so I believe that it's uh, the male female is not an issue. Issue is dedication, hard work, and you know determination. You know. Because if, if you are working, if you know what you are doing, and you are dedicated to it, and uh, and you you uh, you are ready for it, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, uh, you know, you can do it. And uh, there have been uh, you know a lot of male uh, successful nurses uh, in different places, including in Bangladesh. And uh, so I, I believe that. Trend is changing. A uh, lot of male nurses are coming. Uh, as also in teaching profession, there are male teachers and nursing colleges. Uh, in in the ten years back, you would see hardly any teachers working in uh, you know uh, nursing industries. But in nowadays, it's coming. Uh, it's it's a changing trend because of competition, and uh, also there is a uh, uh, you know another valid reason for government to uh, you know encourage nurse uh, women uh, to come in nursing because. Uh, there is an unequal, uh, you know, uh, distribution of uh, job uh, between male and female in our country. So it's still we haven't reached the equality there. So the government is creating an opportunity for nurses exclusively for women, so that they, uh, they can bridge the gap, uh, 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 you know, uh, in a, this area, and so that uh, you know they can get the equal opportunities to work and uh, be independent. Yes, I think that is uh, one of the reasons, probably. Absolutely. Yeah, that is the right. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if Nahida is trying, or she's on mute. Maybe she's not trying to speak to us. Nahida, did you want sorry. to? Sorry. That's okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> the thing is, uh, I believe this is a very special motto of our Bangladeshi government because their vision is to empower the women. So this is kind of part of women empowerment. So this is for time being, I believe. And after maybe a couple of years, they will definitely, you know, uh, minimize this system or quota system. So that's the thing, actually. Yes, yes, absolutely. Like for okay. example, in Grameen Bank, you know, the most of the uh, borrower are women. So mm. Okay. For yes. the women employment. Yes, yes, wonderful. <laughs> Well, this this has been just amazing, and you know th that that COVID nineteen has facilitated these types of discussions where we're in operating in three different time zones in, yeah. <laughs> in different parts of the world to be able to engage this way has just been amazing. So thank you, thank you so much. So I and always say COVID not only bad for us, also good for us, because we are using the technologies, we learn how to use the technologies and how to uh, how to benefit from the technologies. So that's also good for us. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me tell you, I didn't use Zoom before COVID either. So <laughs> we do, we do. <laughs> Plenty of people across the United did States. I. <laughs> oh my God! Zoom. Who, who knew? We didn't. We didn't know. Yeah, yeah, uh, so, yeah. uh, so this is yeah. been amazing, and I, I want to. I want to continue this conversation. I think that there are opportunities for our master students to get involved in the research. There, yeah. I would. I would just love to very much continue a partnership, and I will be in touch for that. Sure. Thank you very we much. Be, we would be really enjoyed glad. very much this time, yeah. kind of discussion, and we are excited and a nice discussion, and I love it. And thank you, Jacqueline. And also, up, 
after the pandemic, you are welcome to visit our country, our college, and I think you would love this country. Uh, I would love that. And same, you are, you are certainly welcome to, to come to New York. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Thank you very much.